There's a lot of mountain glaciers on our Earth, but most of the ice that is lying on land is on Greenland and on Antarctica, where there is huge ice sheets. The Greenland ice sheet uh, alone holds enough water to raise global sea level by about seven meters. And on Antarctica, in the West Antarctic and East Antarctic ice sheets, uh, together we have enough ice to raise sea level by about 60 meters. So this is uh, clearly a big concern because it means that we cannot afford to lose even a small percentage of that continental ice. Otherwise, we'll have meters of sea level rise with detrimental effects for uh, coastal cities and island nations and uh, low-lying land areas like in Bangladesh, for example. So there is a big question, how stable are these ice sheets? Especially if you take into account that uh, at the end of the last ice age, 20,000 years ago was the height of the last ice age, uh, we had um, three times as much ice as today. We lost two thirds of that ice and that meant 120 meters of sea level rise as a result of about five degrees global warming. Now, how much ice will we lose if we raise global temperature by a further one, two, three degrees centigrade? That is a big question. And unfortunately, the prospect is not very uh, positive in this respect because the ice sheets in Greenland as well as in Antarctica are subject to some instabilities. And uh, these instabilities are related to the kind of self-stabilizing feedbacks that exist uh, for these ice sheets. In Greenland, it's quite easy to explain. There is a so-called ice elevation feedback. The Greenland ice sheet is 3,000 meters thick, and that means that the central parts of this ice sheet are very high above sea level, and that means they are in parts of the atmosphere that are very cold because our atmosphere gets colder the higher up you go. And therefore the surface of the ice sheet in Greenland is very cold and it's uh, only very rarely, actually only in recent times, that on some days there's melting, melting all the way up there, but normally there's practically no melt in the center of the ice sheet. And uh, so the ice sheet surface is kept cold by the very fact that the ice sheet is there and that's a self-stabilizing feedback. When the ice sheet loses mass and gets thinner and thinner, the surface automatically moves into warmer layers of air because it gets lower down in the atmosphere. And so this is a kind of vicious circle that uh, can be started there. And uh, it is very easy to show theoretically that there is a, a critical point, you can call it a tipping point, where the ice sheet uh, shifts from being self-stabilizing and self-maintaining to the vicious circle actually becoming a vicious circle that will wipe out the entire ice sheet. Luckily, we believe that this will take uh, many hundreds, uh, if not a few thousand years to complete, so we do not expect seven meters of global sea level rise anytime soon. But there is real concern that we might trigger that vicious circle the irreversible loss of the Greenland ice sheet, uh, possibly even within the next decades. We already observe the ice sheet losing increasing amounts of mass now. That we can determine from satellites by the GRACE satellite mission that um, basically weighs the ice mass on Greenland with a very ingenious system of two satellites flying very close to each other and feeling the gravity pull of that ice mass. And uh, you can see, uh, if you look at the NASA satellite data, where that ice sheet is losing mass. It's mainly around the edges. In the center of the ice sheet, it is uh, actually gaining a little bit of mass. That is also to be expected because climate is getting warmer. Uh, that means more snowfall, but uh, it still means the center of the Greenland ice sheet is so cold that there's hardly any melt there. So in the center it's building up snow and therefore ice mass. But around the edges it is losing more and more and the overall effect is an increasing mass loss of Greenland. 
which contributes already significantly to global sea level rise. Now, the fourth assessment of the IPCC published in 2007 concluded that uh, there was a risk of losing the Greenland ice sheet of passing that tipping point uh, starting at about two degrees global warming. And that at the time was one of the key rationales of limiting global warming to a maximum of two degrees. That famous two degree limit partly resulted from the risk of crossing the threshold for the Greenland ice sheet. Now, unfortunately, um, as has been the case with uh, several other of the IPCC estimates, this was overly cautious and actually understated the risk. In the new IPCC report, uh, it is uh, uh, conceded that already from about one degree global warming, we run the risk of losing that Greenland ice sheet. And um, of course, that is of major concern. If we look at uh, the other end, the Antarctic ice sheet, it is subject to another kind of instability, which is called the marine ice sheet instability, and which has been known since uh, the work of John Mercer in the 1970s. Mercer back then, actually, when you read his old papers, uh, wrote in uh, major journals like Nature very stark warnings that we would be destabilizing the West Antarctic ice sheet and causing major sea level rise uh, with further global warming. And uh, several recent studies by uh, works, uh, different research groups have uh, suggested very strongly that it is highly likely that the West Antarctic ice sheet has crossed a tipping point where the further retreat of this ice sheet becomes this kind of vicious circle, a self-sustaining process. For, for this marine ice sheet instability, basically it works, uh, it, it kicks in when the ice sheet is on a backward sloping underground, a backward sloping bed, because then the further it retreats, the less friction there is that resists the further flow of the ice into the ocean and the further ice loss. And so once uh, the ice sheet crosses a kind of hill, and retreats uh, over that hill and is, finds itself on a backward sloping bed, uh, it is basically doomed and everything points to that already being the case with the West Antarctic ice sheet, which alone would cause in the coming centuries about three meters of global sea level rise. So there are further instability thresholds in the East Antarctic ice sheet uh, that can be crossed for example, in the Wilkes Basin, that uh, if we cross those uh, stability threshold, we would probably uh, commit further meters of sea level rise in the future. And all this is made all the more plausible by the fact of how much ice, uh, how much ice we have lost at the end of the last ice age and also by uh, how much sea level rise we find for earlier warm periods in Earth history, uh, like in the Eemian interglacial, where the temperatures were only about one degree above present, but uh, the data point to six to nine meters of uh, higher sea level than today. So there is very real concern that maybe we have already or likely we have already committed to meters of sea level rise with a one degree global warming that we have caused and uh, that we could cross further stability thresholds of the big continental ice sheets of Greenland and Antarctica. Uh, and this becoming all the more likely the more global warming we permit before we stop it.